All right, hello and welcome. Uh, this is General Stash here with Weenie Trades. Uh, today we're going to be looking at PLTR and conducting an in-depth fundamental analysis on the company. Um, today is March 16th, 2021. Um, for those of you who don't know, on our Discord, uh, we do, we're do we going to be doing one of these in-depth fundamental analysis videos per week. And that's going to be chosen by our course students. So our course students uh, vote in that poll and decide which video will be the next deep dive fundamental analysis. Um, if you are interested in joining the course, we got that linked in the description. And we do have a weekly giveaway going on for the course. All you have to do is subscribe to the main channel, uh, like the video, and comment with the question that will be asked at the end of the video. You can do that up to five times a week uh, to get five entries. And the winner will be announced on Friday um, on our live streaming channel, which I'll have the link for that above on screen right now. Uh, now, we do also want to be putting out videos on uh, more overviews, so shorter videos, just kind of doing an overview fundamental analysis for investment stocks. Uh, we'll post those uh, later in the week. I want to do two of those a week, and that's just voted on by our uh, general Discord community, so you don't have to be a course member for that. Uh, if you'd like to have a say in the future direction of our videos, uh, join the Discord. Link's in the description below. We'd love to see you in there. All right, so jumping into PLTR and this fundamental analysis, uh, what we're gonna be uh, focusing on today, we're gonna look at their business model and operations, take a look at their product line and conduct overview and analysis of those products, as well as who those products are catering to and what their, what their target market is. We're also gonna take a look at their growth model, uh, their going concerns for the company. Uh, we'll review their February 16th earnings uh, and take a look ahead with some price targets. Um, so taking a look at the company itself, the business model and operations, uh, Palantir was co-founded by Peter Thiel and CEO Alex Karp in 2003. Their headquarters are currently in Denver, Colorado, just down the street from me after leaving Silicon Valley. Uh, these two did work together at PayPal and are using similar strategies to create innovative software catering to government and commercial customers. Uh, you can see at the tweet at the top of the screen, uh, this was shortly before their IPO. At Palantir, we build software that lets organizations integrate their data, their decisions, and their operations into one platform. All right, taking a look at their product line. Uh, the first product that they have is gonna be Gotham, which caters to uh, their government clients. So that focuses on data integration, unified search and destroy, uh, secure collaboration, openness, extensibility, and APIs, which is application programming interfaces. And they got a really cool video here of their launch. So I am gonna show that here. I will have links in the description for timestamps of the video. So if you want to skip through this and just get to you know, the meat and potatoes of the fundamentals, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. Otherwise you can throw this on two times speed or just kind of skim through. It is a cool, cool presentation for you to check out. So we'll just take a look at that real quick.
All right, so yeah, there's the uh, sneak peek into the Gotham 21 launch provided by Palantir. <clears throat> like I said, just a cool little snapshot of um, what we do know that the government side of their product line can do. So that, that has been um, veiled in a little bit of secrecy, which was not ideal for some people as investors, but uh, cool to see a little bit of that being made public. So uh, moving on to their second product, uh, that's going to be Foundry, which uh, caters to their commercial clients. Uh, Foundry provides data security, business ontology, which is a fancy word they chose, uh, which means a set of concepts and categories in a subject area or domain that shows their properties and the relations between them. Uh, also analytical diversity, as well as openness and extensibility. Uh, last but not least is their Apollo, Apollo product line. Um, that is an SaaS or software as a service type of product. Um, and this is a continuous delivery system that manages and deploys both Gotham and Foundry. So kind of like the integration behind those two. Uh, this or orchestrates updates to configurations and software and improves overall margins by allowing Palantir to offer software as a service or SaaS instead of using a consultancy model. This is referred to by Palantir's management as their competitive edge, what sets them apart from their competition. Um, taking a look at um, some statements made by the CEO of Palantir Technology, Alex Karp. Uh, he says, we are very focused on building software a long time before others build it. We are going to be the most important software company in the world. And it does go on to explain that we do only have 125 customers, but uh, he believes they're the 125 most interesting institutions in the world. Uh, he describes them as the single most impressive list of institutions in the world I've ever seen. We want to keep those clients. We'll talk more about that in a bit. Uh, he goes on to describe Apollo. Um, Apollo allows us to maintain and deliver software to any number of clients while essentially not growing our palantiring force at all. Uh, so they can grow the number of their super cool customers all over the world, and they can do it without raising their headcount. Uh, he goes on to say that with Apollo, they can deliver the whole stack in about six hours. So all the software and integration that a company potential client may need in about six hours. And they can do that with a small number of people sitting in one office that they have maintaining, updating, and providing them with new products that they build. Uh, so notably in the news, um, Palantir's products played a role in locating and catching Osama bin Laden. In my mind, probably very similar to that demo video that we just watched. Uh, they also helped uncover Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme, and they deleted Chinese spyware that was found on the Dalai Lama's PC. Um, taking a look at their target market, so for their government organizations, uh, a couple three-letter organizations here, so the CIA, Department of Defense, uh, U.S. Immigrations and Customs Unit, uh, Department of Homeland Security, and New Orleans uh, Police Department, uh, just to name a few. They also took over the Pentagon's Project Maven contract in 2019 after Google decided not to continue developing AI unmanned drones. As far as commercial organizations, um, they have contracts with JP Morgan Chase, Fiat Chrysler, Airbus, BP, other hedge funds, banks, pharma companies, auto manufacturers, etc. cetera. Uh, Palantir estimated their current total addressable market to be about 120 billion currently. And they note that they're specifically targeting the 6,000 companies with more than 500 million in total revenue. Um, I will talk a little bit about that in just a few slides here. All right, so for product overview and analysis, we're looking at some of the pros that um, I'm seeing with these products. Um, so for pros, a lot of deep pocket, and high spending government and commercial clients. Um, and they also do have the potential to penetrate nearly every sector of the market. As far as cons, um, they do have relatively few clients. So really just losing one to two of those clients could be very painful for the bottom line. Uh, taking a look at their growth model, uh, so they do have strong potential for top and bottom line growth. Uh, they are showing relative dominance to their competition. They do still have a small capture of their TAM, their total addressable market, in terms of customer base and total sales. Uh, they are showing very high customer retention rates, and their software as a service model offers recurring revenue through annual contract payments and provides Palantir with a steady flow of capital for compounding growth. Uh, they are not yet 
EBIT positive, which is earnings before interest and taxes. Um, that's due to large investments in research and development, uh, stock-based compensation, and they are notably delaying their short-term margins for better long-term success. Now, they do notably have the potential to add to their product line to attract smaller companies, which would allow for increased TAM. Um, going concerns for Palantir. Uh, not perfect. There are some issues. There are some, some flags for the company. Uh, like we said earlier, a loss of any of their big customers could have potentially massive impact, at least in the short term. Uh, they are currently burning margins on stock-based compensation as well as large executive salaries. Um, in the past, some of their controversial work has caused protests in the past. I won't get too into that, but I'm sure a quick Google search will uh, tell you all you need to know about that. Um, it is likely that eventually strong competition will emerge. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, there has been a bit of an iron curtain behind their Gotham product line just because of who their clients are and the nature of that work. Um, and that can potentially dissuade potential investors. All right, so reviewing their February 16th earnings, uh, this is their last earnings report. Uh, they reported $1.1 billion in total revenue for FY 2020, which uh, shows 47% growth year on year, year over year. Uh, $322 million in FY 2020 fourth quarter, which is a 40% increase. Uh, they did disclose new contracts with Rio Tinto, PG&E, U.S. Army, United States Air Force, the FDA, and the British NHS. Uh, they are expecting uh, fiscal year 2021 first quarter growth of 45%. Uh, they did list their revenue per customer for FY 2020 was 7.9 million per customer, which is a 41% increase. And they also, uh, they list their revenue per customer for their top 20 customers, their 20 biggest customers, was 33.2 million, um, which is up 34%. Um, again, going back to a concern that I have is this, this model of um, outwardly expressing their focus on massive clients. Um, I don't love that for the long term. Now, for the short term, it's, it's successful. Uh, there, there's a lot of reasons to, to target that part of the market. I totally get that. But for them to outwardly and publicly be stating that they're focusing on that metric over everything else. Uh, they've got 125 plus clients. They're notably listing that they care more about their top 20. For me, I don't love that. And like I said earlier, I'd like to see them in the future consider adding to their product line to potentially target uh, companies that are smaller than that 500 million market cap that they, that they say they're targeting. I'd like that to change. That would provide uh, more growth opportunity long-term for the company. So looking at price targets, um, I did provide the bear base in the bull case for the one year, three year and five year targets. Um, I did want to focus mostly on the bull case because I am a Palantir bull. I'm long Palantir, um, especially uh, on uh, March 5th or March 8th when it was trading around $23 a share. I, I really couldn't resist that. So I am a Palantir bull. Um, for the 12 month price target, that's the only price target, uh, for the bull case that I could see them not meeting, uh, really just one, uh, quarterly earnings report that doesn't meet their expectations or doesn't blow investors away. They could fall short of that goal. That, that's the one that I would be worried about. Um, looking at their three year and five year price targets, um, for the bull case, I gave $55 a share for their three year and 73 a share for their five year. Uh, I do have asterisks next to these because I think um, it's very possible that these are extremely conservative price targets. And I still went with them because uh, when you look at software application companies, it's, it's very normal for a uh, massive CAGR or compound annual growth rate in their, in their first years being publicly traded, 47% um, year over year for FY20. That's great, but do I expect for the next five years for them to continue 47% growth? Probably not. I think that's unlikely. So um, being conservative, I did give these these price targets, um, but I did want to note that I will be readdressing Palantir as I'm a huge Palantir bull. This was the top requested ticker for my first fundamental analysis. So whenever we get uh, big news updates or uh, new earnings, we'll definitely be making follow-up videos to 
talk about how that may or may not change uh, these price targets that I've given. Uh, so looking at Palantir long term, I, I am a bull. I'm really excited to see what they can do in order to maximize their growth. I would like to see them uh, continue their customer acquisition, uh, continue to reduce their debt. Um, and ideally, in the long term, I'd like to see them get away from only focusing on the 6,000 largest companies in the world. But that's just me personally. So uh, that's about it for the fundamental analysis. Of course, with this being Weenie Trades, uh, having the in-house technical analysis expert of Weenie, uh, I will be turning that over to him. I did just want to mention that um, for any of you interested in the course, again, we are giving away one free course a week. All you have to do for that is subscribe to the channel, uh, like the video, and comment the question at the end of the video. For this video, the question's very simple. Uh, what is your 12-month price target for Palantir? Love to hear what you think. And uh, remember, you can get up to five entries per week for the weekly giveaway. Um, would love to see all of you guys eventually find your way into the course. I would love to see some of you get in there for free. So please comment below, uh, like the video, hit the bell so you're notified when new videos are posted. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. I'll turn it over to Weenie. Thanks. Alrighty, this will be the technical section of PLTR. So PLTR, we are in a pretty decent downtrend. We got a high, we got a lower high, a lower high, uh, and then this is technically still a lower high from this previous swing high. So the trend really is still down on PLTR. I am looking for a potential trend change to see if we can get a higher low, higher high, then we could start a new uptrend and maybe we can uh, bounce and bounce off that trend or consolidate or something like that. So PLTR, if we can get a higher low and higher high, maybe we bull flag and pop, that would be great. But let's look at some key levels. So short term PLTR, it looks like we keep uh, hitting this little zone right here. See how we, we hit the zone earlier, we sell off. We bounce off the zone, we bounce off the zone. Do we bounce off the zone? Now the zone's getting a little bit weaker. Are we going to roll over? The more times that zone and uh, support gets tested, the weaker it gets. So short term, you know, 2540. 2540 is the flush point where if PLTR comes underneath that, we're gonna, we might test 25 pretty quickly and probably something like 2467. And that comes from this little demand zone right here. Wick, wick, bottom, bottom, bottom. And then that's going to be the next zone where if PLTR starts uh, breaking that 2550, it's likely to just be magnetic in the short term. Otherwise, on the top side, if PLTR can start breaking first 2650, so 2650 is the start of a potential new uptrend. But really, we got to get above this breakdown candle high and close hourly above 27 to test the top end of this supply zone and test 28. So that's short term. Medium term, that 2467 is really important. You know, if we go to the 180-day four-hour chart, we really kind of want to hold that 24 level and really start this trend change underway. Otherwise, if we don't hold that 2467, we could really start flushing and make a lower low and continue the lower highs and lower lows. So if we're, you're really anticipating a trend change at this point on PLTR. But as long as it's hourly above 2467, it has the chance to get that trend change going and test 29s and 30s. If we can hold 29s and 30s midterm, then we can test this breakdown candle high, you know, 33-ish, 33-ish. And then obviously 35 halfway through to 40 will be a little bit of resistance. It depends on how we get into that level. If we go straight into that level, it's likely to drop. If we can uh, consolidate a little bit before the level and then pop, then we could probably break through depending on what type of energy is built on the flag and consolidation. So let's check out the daily time frame real quick. On the daily time frame, again, lower highs, lower lows. We're looking for that trend change. And that, that 24, that 2467, that let's call it 24-ish, is really important for PLTR. The longer beneath 24, it just starts to make it really tough to make that new uptrend and it can just continue on downward. So that's going to be really pivotal. Otherwise, if we just stay sideways for a little bit longer, that would be extremely bullish and we could potentially pop a good bull flag and continue on upward. So that bull flag will pop if, you know, 27 goes, let's call it 2750 and then we can touch that 30. But that's, you know, long term, as long as PLTR is above $20 a share, you know, it can do whatever it wants, you know, long term, you know, one to three years, uh, three to five years. It's a little bit tough to say three to five years. When um we're, when we ha when this is all the data that we have, 
the massive ranges, you know, from 45 all the way down to 20. Let's see if we can uh, get back and re reclaim and get above 30. 30 is kind of that like midpoint area psychologically. So if Palantir can hold above $30 a share, Palantir can probably hold on. Otherwise, if it rolls over strong from $30 a share and starts a lower high and lower low, that could be really bad for PLTR. Just short term stuff. And we always will need to evaluate the data of the price later on. So hope you enjoyed this technical analysis of PLTR.